Okay, so here's a sampling example, and we're told that we have a sampling impulse train in the time domain, continuous time, which is the summation of delta functions, and the period of sampling, these delta functions are separated by capital T, so that's the period of sampling. And we're told that the Fourier transform of this sequence of delta functions, which are doing the sampling in the time domain, is also a sequence of delta functions and it's in the frequency domain. And you can confirm that uh, for yourselves or use uh, standard Fourier uh, transform tables. Uh, and the form of this Fourier transform is a scalar 2 pi on t times the summation of these delta functions. And the delta functions are offset by an integer, which is k, uh, times omega s. Omega s is given by this formula and we're asked the first part to sketch that Fourier transform for the sampling period t equals pi on 3. So in this case, omega s equals 2 pi divided by pi times 3, which equals 6. So we have to sketch this Fourier transform of our sampling waveform for omega s equals 6. So this is a sequence of delta functions. Uh, let's uh, plot them here. So here's uh, the omega and this is the capital P J omega, the Fourier transform. And uh, we have for k equals zero, we have a delta function at zero. So this is this delta function here. And the height of the delta function is two pi on t, which also equals six. Uh, and then the, when k equals one, we have a delta function at omega equals omega s, which equals six. So we have a delta function at six. Uh, when k equals 2, we have a delta function at 12, uh, and the same for the negative values, minus 6, minus 12, uh, and these repeat forever because that's an infinite summation. So this is the Fourier transform of our sampling waveform. So then the next part of the question, uh, such as this, would be to be given a time domain sequence and a signal and being asked about the Fourier transform of the sampled version. So x is our signal in the time domain, a continuous time. We're multiplying by our sampling period uh, waveform pt and uh, again for t equals pi on 3 uh, and then we are asked to find the Fourier transform, sketch the Fourier transform of that sampled waveform. We're given the Fourier transform of x. So here is x, it's a low pass because this is the frequency domain, it contains low frequencies, not high frequencies, but low frequencies, and this is typical of many signals, many smooth signals. So we have multiplication in the time domain, and we know that this is equivalent in the Fourier transform to 1 divided by 2 pi times the convolution, x of j omega convolved with the Fourier transform of our sampling function. So multiplication in the time domain is convolution in the frequency domain with this scaling of 1 on 2 pi. So what do we have now? We have to uh, do the convolution of the function we just generated before, this uh, function here, with our signal uh, x here, x of j omega, and we know from the property of convolution that when you convolve something with a delta function, it, the function itself will appear centered on each of the delta functions. That's a property of convolution with delta functions. So that's what we will have here. Uh, so we will have uh, our function here. There's a delta function at zero. So we'll have our function here uh, appearing. I've just drawn the scale and the horizontal a little more squashed in so that we can see it, but this will be uh, our basic function around the impulse was, which was at zero, and then we had a, also a, a, a delta function at six, we had a delta function at 12, and we had a func delta function at minus six and minus 12. So this is our uh, the Fourier transform of our sampled function. Okay, and the height of this is 1 divided by 2 pi times the height of the x and the height times the height of p. So that was 12, so the height of this here is 6 times 2 divided by 2 pi, which equals 6 divided by pi.
And now we might also be interested in a sampled version when the period of sampling is longer. And so that's what we're going to look at now. So here, sketch the Fourier transform of that sampled waveform if the period was twice as long as the period before. So before we had pi on 3 for the period, now we have 2 pi on 3. So this is a longer period, which means a lower frequency of sampling. And we know if we don't sample fast enough, uh, we might not be able to be able to recover our original signal. We can recover if these duplicates are separated and don't overlap. Uh, of course, if they do overlap, they will add together. These are adding together because this one here was zero everywhere, added to this one which was zero. So the result is the function that we see here, uh, where there's zero in between here. But if they overlap, we won't be able to reverse that process. Um, so let's see if that's what happens here. So here we've got 2 pi on 3 as a sampling period. It's twice the period, which means half the sampling rate, which means we're sampling slower. So now, of course, omega s, which equals uh, 2 pi on t, it's 2 pi divided by 2 pi times 3, which equals 3. So now omega s equals 3, which means the copies will appear at 3 uh, of our sampling function, which means we're now going to have uh, these um, uh, original ones still down to 2, but the copies are now going to come in at multiples of 3. So this is where the copies are going to come in. Um, and of course they're going to be at 6 because that's twice 3. Uh, and a copy at 9. And the same for 12. And the negative as well. So negative 3 uh, goes up to negative 1 and down to negative 5. And the 6 comes up to negative 4. And, and so on. And the function is the summation of these functions. And you can see here, from this point here, uh, we've now, in this range here, we've got overlapping functions. And because these are linear and they're straight, the amount of decrease from this function here equals the amount of increase there. So between these functions here, this decreasing plus this increasing is going to equal a constant. So what we're going to have is a constant when we add up those copies between the peaks and then of course we have the peaks. So this function here is our Fourier transform of our sampled function if we sample at a bigger sampling period which means a lower sampling rate and this is aliasing of course and we are not able to recover our original signal because now there is this aliasing that happens between the copies. So this turns out, in this case, it was sampling too slow if we wanted to be uh, able to recover the original signal. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video and uh, check out the channel for other videos on signals and systems.